Now, I got to tell you, the market displayed a fair amount of grit today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average erased a triple digit loss, uh, came up with a triple digit move to the upside, even though we did drift into the close. Now, it was strong economic trends. Uh, they continue to justify this stealth rally. Remember, we are up significantly from the March 23rd lows. But by the same token, there, there is a sort of anxiety, a general anxiety that seems to be growing about how much longer this can last and just how high it could go. Now, I think these trends, especially increased capital expenditures and other business investments, that points to a very robust economic backdrop that's going to go well into 2019, probably much farther out than that. Now, the message of today's session, I, I saw the big return of big tech uh, influencing several sectors, right, because you've got it in communication services, consumer discretionary and technology. The energy sector moved up, had a nice pop, West Texas Intermediate moving higher, in part uh, to the hurricane uh, Florence. I still love those Permian Basin ideas, despite recent infrastructure issues that have hurt these stocks. Now, I won't pound a table, but if it gets above $74 a barrel, you've got to have exposure. Now, when we check under the hood, though, what, what, what bothered me today about the market was the breadth. Uh, I talk about this a lot, and essentially, it's different measures of internal demand and strength. There were barely more advancing names on the New York Stock Exchange than decliners. In fact, there were more decliners on the NASDAQ than advancers. Same situation with the up to down volume. There was significantly more new, new lows versus new highs on both exchanges, which brings me to ask pain because a lot of people have been asking, what does it mean when only a handful of stocks seem to be carrying this market? Remember, 20% of the S&P 500 right now in bear market territory. So for me, it underscores a few points. Number one, the impact of passive investing. And everybody, everybody's buying the winners, which guess what? Only pushes up the winners. The lack of opportunistic buying shows that even deep-pocketed investors would rather err on the side of chasing performance than finding great opportunities. And then, of course, the heightened concerns about what happens when these big tech names really finally go into bear market territory. I'm not sure yet. As far as China was a concern, uh, you know, listen, major downside moves in the China stock market. Uh, they're taking it on the chin. This, as Wall Street experts continue to wave the white flag of surrender on tariff talk. Invesco China Tech Index down 25% year to date. Its top holdings, its top four holdings are Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, and NetEase, all at 52 week lows or lower. By the way, many of the big hitters on Wall Street are urging investors to buy emerging markets rather than buying those cheap, great American stocks that are currently under duress. I say, you know what, stick with the American companies. Uh, when they go and sell, companies like Boeing are opportunistic, once-in-a-lifetime opportunities to buy great names at great prices.